and welcome to Obsessions of a Vocaholic. I am Brittany, and today we're going to be talking about The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. Woo! So Wrath and the Dawn is sort of a retelling of A Thousand and One Nights, which is actually, I absolutely adore. Anybody who doesn't know, I mentioned another video, but for anybody who doesn't know, I'm a history major in university right now. Pretty much anything with this sort of historical background or even background in old folklore and novels and stuff like that is like really really up my alley so I was so excited to read The Wrath and the Dawn. It took me forever to get to. I am kind of like buried underneath my TBR pile at the moment. It's not a good thing. So this has been sitting on my shelf for ages and I've just been waiting until I can actually sit down and focus on it and so finally I decided to get at it. I made such a mistake by not reading this earlier. This book is absolutely phenomenal. And it's like, it says, if you read the, the little author thingy in the back, it's her debut novel. This is quite the debut. Holy! There are books that I have read by established authors that do not even come close to this much world building, the authenticity, of the, just the feeling of all my everything. Everything in this was absolutely fantastic. It was, it was mesmerizing. So, okay, I'm gonna give a little bit of a review thing before we go into the spoilery bit because I really want anybody who hasn't read it to actually be able to hear something about it because I enjoyed this book so, 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 so much. So, okay, the premise of this book is that the 18-year-old caliph of Khorasan named Khalid, Khalid, I think that's how you say it, every night he takes a wife and by every dawn she's dead. They, she's strangled by a silken cord around her neck. So everybody in their city and surrounding cities and everybody who's under his jurisdiction thinks he's an absolute monster. And so Shahrazad, the 16-year-old main character of this novel, volunteers to become his next wife. Her best friend Shiva, slash cousin, best friend slash cousin Shiva, had previously been taken by Khalid and then murdered, obviously, as per is his MO. And so she decides that she's going to go in and she's going to marry him and she's going to figure out a way to kill him. But you know that in order to kill him that she has to make it past the first night. It starts off really, really quickly. Like, there's no setup. You don't find out. You sort of pick the pieces together that Shiva, and her best friend, has died and that's why she's doing this because it, it picks up right at the wedding. You're like, oh, oh, wow. Okay, so we're doing this. We're doing this right now. She goes in, she goes, you get to see a bunch of different perspectives as well. Like, you see how her father is reacting to it, her childhood love, how he's reacting to it, which is not well, by the way, like, at all. You get to see a couple of her other family members. Eventually, you get to hear something from Khalid. It starts out, and it opens as Shahrazad is getting ready for her wedding. Then it goes into a couple of her family, everybody else realizing what Shahrazad has done, their reactions, figuring out how they're going to react to what, how she reacted to Shiva's death. And then it goes into their bridal chamber. Um, they've married. Khalid shows up, and they have sex because that's historically how weddings went which was kind of really sucked for her but and then she knows that he's going to kill her before dawn comes that's how everything happens all every single wife he's previously had has died before dawn has come and so Shahrazad starts telling stories and that's when the whole 1001 Arabian Nights things come in and I personally like I said, any of the history stuff, more than that, Arabian Nights is just one of the most, I think, fascinating tales. I think Arabian or Middle Eastern culture, especially in ancient and medieval times, is positively fascinating. So to get to see that put together into a book, and then she calls on these stories, because it's not just her making up her own tales, it's her as the character from Arabian Night telling those stories. And it's so interesting to see how she expertly weaves her tales in a way to convince the Caliph that he wants to keep her alive. And so I'm not gonna say too, too much about that because I don't wanna spoil anything for any of you people who are still here who don't want it spoiled, which you really, really don't. It's, it's a fascinating, fascinating read and it takes something away from it if you have any part of it spoiled. Um, but other than that, I'm gonna talk about the setting. It was fantastic. Every single thing you felt was real. The smell of the incense, the food that they were eating, the colors of the tapestries and stuff, the type of jewels that they were wearing, all of it, it just felt so authentic, so real the entire time that you're in it you feel like you're actually in it. So it's it's not just you putting a movie together in your mind or imagining everything you go. It's like a movie and a painting and you actually being in the situation all together 
all at once because it just feels so real and you connect so deeply with what Scheherazade is going through and you can understand her emotional struggle as she's going through her feelings about the Caliph, her feelings about her family, her feelings about Shiva and she's trying to piece together why is it that Khalid has been killing all of his wives because he doesn't seem like the horrible monster that everybody makes him out to be that she had thought he was in the beginning so you get to really see how the relationship progresses in addition to Scheherazade how her character comes out and how she pieces through all the problems. There's also a bit of a fantasy element which you, it's not totally clear in the very beginning so you're not I personally I didn't realize there was gonna be much in fantasy. Yeah there's nothing on the back of it that really talks about a fantasy element. I won't say it I don't want to spoil it just know that it's there. It doesn't come totally into play. It probably could have done without it but the whole, uh, that kind of culture and stuff like that with those stories, the stories in the Arabian Nights are things like Aladdin and stuff. So just, if you really, really think about it, magic carpets, all that jazz, it's not that much of a stretch to imagine the magic coming into it. So it does fit, it, it woven in seamlessly. It could have been, it's very, very strong without it even, but the fantasy is just an added extra element. So with that, those of you who have not read the book, I'm gonna need you to go right now because I really don't want to spoil this. It is such a fantastic read and I don't see, do you see how many times I'm saying this? Because it's really really good. So you need to go and you need to read it and then you need to come back because I'm probably not going to be done talking about this for the next like good six years and I have to still get the next one so I'll be back to talk about that one. Please 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 go away and read it and then come back and we can discuss and get all excited about it together okay? So so go so go. Okay we're good. You know how some books, especially the paperback copies, they'll have that little excerpt from the novel itself in the beginning just to give you like a little a little taste test of what you're about to read? The Wrath of the Dawn paperback has that. That is all it took to completely destroy me. And I don't know how many of you guys actually have this kind of copy because I know most people read it when it first came out. I know, I'm sorry, I'm ashamed. But, but if you just... Just, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of it. It's the part when they're in the market, right? And he goes to kiss her. She has the bow held out to him. And he's talking about, I didn't like it when you called me your friend. Do you guys remember that part? And it's like, do you prefer my king or Saidi? Don't know if I'm saying this right. He leaned forward, his brow almost brushing against hers. I prefer Khalid. Shahrzad swallowed. What are you doing to me, you plague of a girl? He whispered. If I'm a plague, then you should keep your existence unless you plan on being destroyed. The weapon still in her grasp, she shoved against his chest. No, his hands dropped her waist. Destroy me. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is all it took. Destroy him? Destroy me. I was destroyed. I was destroyed in a good, like, five seconds. That is all it took. That is all it took. And as soon as I read that, I just sort of closed it and I looked up at the ceiling and I was like, oh my god. What have I been missing? What have I waited for? Holy shit! And so suffice to say, I finished this in the night. Anyway, so finally you get into it. And the, I really, really liked how they started it. I know I mentioned that, but the prologue with the captain and I, or I think it's Jalal? I'm assuming it's Jalal. Um, in the very, very beginning where they're talking about Kali and talking about he really is and it's like, you don't know, it's, it's like it's gonna break him. And so all immediately you're like, oh, Wait, is this guy not as bad as you think he is? Because he's killing all of his wives. He he does sound like the monster that everybody makes him out to be, but in the very, very beginning with that first scene, you already get to know that there's something else going on. It's like they're, he says he's talking about how they're almost done, and he, I'm sure he can handle it, and then Jalal's like, you have no idea. You have no idea how it's crushing him. You start to realize, like, okay, so there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye. And then Shahrzad comes in, they do their wedding thing, and then she comes in with the tail of the sailor. It was perfect. It was absolutely perfect perfect how she put everything together the stories were connected that is why he couldn't leave she didn't finish the story i was so happy she didn't finish the story when the dawn came want to hear the rest of the story well you have to keep me alive for another night and it's like yes yes shaharzad that is how you do it and even he's he's reluctant and angry but also intrigued and he keeps her alive and so right then you know you know she's got something special and shaharzad is absolutely She's awesome. She's so headstrong and so 
just in general strong as a character and she's determined and she has a good head on her shoulders but she's sensible she's not too sensible that she forgets about letting her guard down a little bit and letting like Khalid and stuff in and but she then she still thinks about it when she realizes her how her feelings are getting to her she's like oh god Tariq and oh god Shiva and like what am I doing but she knows enough to properly out the answers rather than just going with what everybody's been saying. Tariq, for that reason, it's pissed me off to no end. At first I thought it was a little charming and he's like, oh, he's still in love with her and he wants to rescue her and protect her and they're gonna get married and I'm sure she loves him too until, you know, she falls in love with Khalid and then my life is made. But he refused to look any deeper and I think that's the biggest problem that I had with him and this is one of the biggest boons that I had gave to Shahrazad because she actually looked beneath the surface. She thought, okay, there's a reason for this and we're going to find out the reason. We're not just going to look at him like he's a power hungry king who likes to watch his pretty girl suffer and Tariq comparing their body sizes and their strength and their ability to sword fight and stuff like that. Even Shahrazad knows better and tries to warn him, but Watching him do that, it just makes you appreciate Shahrazad even more and then characters in general who will go above and beyond to figure things out rather than just accepting what's right in front of them because that's what Tariq does. And he doesn't even accept it when Shahrazad is to pull back from him and then he becomes more obsessive and that's what made me even more angry is at the end of it when he's like he's possessive of her. He, he, he talks about all the time how Shahrazad is she's going to make her own decisions and she we're, she's going to be the one who we're chasing after and stuff like that. It's not the normal dynamics between the two of them. She's She's gonna be the troublemaker. If anybody can kill the king, it's gonna be her. And then all of a sudden, when she starts to display those traits that he's talking so admirably of the entire time, he has to pin her down. It's like, oh, you're not thinking straight. Oh, he has you under his spell. And she's like, what, what spell? You didn't even bother to try and figure out what's going on behind closed doors, so don't tell me what to feel. And he does. And then, and that's how it ends, which is absolutely frustrating, but I will get there shortly. The relationship between Shahrazad and Khalid is, oh, I loved it so much, so much. And I know, I know, I'm sorry, I say that a lot. I say that pretty much all the time. I am a big romance fanatic, but seriously, this one is, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. So when it starts off, obviously she's gonna hate them. You all know this, and you've all read the book, so you've been there with me. Again, I love the hate to love love stories. Love them so much. I don't feel like I'm alone in this, but I just have to convey just how much I really, genuinely, truly adore these kinds of books. So it was no surprise to me that when they started to hate each other, I was gonna love it. Certain level of insta-love, I guess you could call it, in this, but it's still like a hesitant kind of insta-love, so I can appreciate that. I have a love-hate relationship with insta-love. More airing on the hate side, the more of it I read, you just kind of get sick of them falling in love immediately because real life doesn't usually work like that. Besides the point, the fact that they're spending every night together means that they get to know each other better and Shahrazad does not hide who she is at all. Even if she tried, she probably couldn't do it because she's just such a strong personality. And it's perfect when you get to see her start to defend herself and stuff like that or even watch her cunning and how she pieces through things. You can see it in the relationship with Despina. I love Despina. Despina is amazing. She's absolutely perfect for Palace Spy. She's kind of frustrating, but she doesn't take any bullshit. She calls Shahrazad out. The two of them, their banter is absolutely perfect. Really hard to ask for a better best friend character for Shahrazad throughout the novel because Despina is there throughout it all and she can even help with some of the pal the court intrigue and get involved in some of the suspicions and such. So like when uh, Shahrazad was poisoned, it's like, oh, it might be Despina, which I called. I did not think it was Shaspina, I thought it was the captain. And I was correct about it was the captain, and I thought that she was sick because she was pregnant, and lo and behold, she was sick because she was pregnant, and then I thought it was Jalal, and it is Jalal's! I was very proud of myself! Jalal's- I am so excited for that baby, and I know neither of the characters are, but I really don't care at all. I am so ready. Jalal is just so perfect and Despina is wonderful and the two of them are just, they're just, they would just be great. I can see it. I can see it so much. I'm getting off topic. Okay. Anyway, Khalid and Shahrazad, once you start to see their relationship blossom, holy hell is it amazing. So the first taste you sort of get of him, his feelings towards her, is when 
the guards come in and he calls her my mount the mountain of adamant i died I actually, I think I died right on the spot. Perfect it was. And like, if anybody doesn't know, adamant is actually, historically, it was one of the strongest stones in existence. But that's where the word adamant comes from. It's like strong and unyielding because it was after the rock. So the mountain of adamant, the strong, unyielding stone, it was just such a perfect metaphor for her. But in addition to that, you could start to see how the relationship was starting to form. And then he decides he's going to kill her. And rightfully so, she was angry, I was angry, I think all of us were angry, and then he bolts in, bashing the guard who had the cord around her neck, and it's just such a gloriously painful, gruesome episode, and I loved it. And then he comes, and he's trying to repent to her. His repentance for the trying to kill her is just so heart-wrenchingly sweet, and then he calls her my queen, and you can see that he's so torn up, and he's so regretful of it, and it's like, I'm leaving for a week. And then he comes back, and then tells those stories again, and then the whole market chapter. Everything about that chapter got to me. Everything about it. I have my notes. My notes here. I had so many notes, with starting with the, the tiny cucumbers comment. Yes, Shazzy. Yes. It was so beyond perfect. I can't even begin to explain how amazing it was. And then the whole, what, oh, when they're in the alleyway and it starts passing blame on each other and she's like, you and your temper, Khalid. And he's like, you and your mouth, Shazzy. And it's that magnificent mouth that he goes to kiss her and it's just, <laughs> and then, but then obviously all the other people show up. And so, but the entire, my entire page of notes is just like that one chapter. It's just Katniss who? Katniss who? When she pulls out the bow and she trains it all and it just takes like, she knows what she's doing. I mean, you know that she knows what she's doing from before, but it was just such a proud moment. And then him watching her and just the whole fucking market chapter did me in. And then... And then it has to end with that page in the beginning that I told you all destroyed me. It ends with that. I'm speechless. I'm like beyond speechless. I don't even know what to just... Everything. I loved everything. Every word. Every moment. Just, I need a minute. I need a minute. See, I don't know exactly how I feel about these kinds of books that make you hate the guy who's supposed to be really bad. Like, okay, for instance, I don't know if any of you guys have read by Claudia Gray the Firebird trilogy. Hating the villain kind of thing, you'll know what I mean. But here especially, like, he keeps doing bad things and he won't explain them. So you keep thinking he's a bad person, but then he he's like super sweet and devoted and in love with Shazi and he says like things that just make you crumble and you but then he's just he, I, he's, it's so confusing the entire book. See, my emotions are about as tumultuous and all over the place as poor Shazi's emotions, so I can only imagine what she would actually be feeling. How is anybody supposed to deal with that? But anyway, their relationship on the whole is just like, it's, it's prime shipping ability because they're just, they complement each other so well. And she pushes him, but she's also patient enough with him, but, and knows when she needs to push harder, when he's going to share something or he needs to share something for both of their sakes because he doesn't usually notice it and he's afraid of what she's gonna think, but he's also protecting her even though everybody thinks she's gonna die. And he says, they're just, everything about them is so cute and romantic and like swoon worthy, heart palpitation level beautiful. And they, even when they get to see the end, when they start, they've sort of accepted their feelings for each other and they've really sort of progressed in their relationship and you get to see just how far they're going and then they have the whole, the actual romantic sex scene when he's not just because they're married and they need to do it and when he's leaving again and he's like I'll be gone for two or three weeks and then she's like two or three weeks and he's like yeah so I'll see you in two weeks and then she kisses him and is like okay we'll make that ten days we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going down there just it's the cutest and oh, oh. <laughs> okay but barring the relationship
relationship, you also have the other plot lines and such. So the, obviously the primary one is between Shahrazad and Khalid and trying to figure out why exactly he's killing the wife, which by the way, that reason, I did not see coming. I had a feeling it had something to do with a previous wife or something had gone on. I didn't think he was a monster at any point in it. He just, he just seemed like a boy who was hurting. But I did not see the whole thing with Ava. And honestly, what kind of father wants... So he goes to... I, I don't even have words. I don't even have words. You want the rest of the country, world, whatever, his people, to hate him as much as you hate him because his... Your daughter committed suicide when she miscarried or when the baby died or whatever and he didn't have- didn't love her enough, didn't pay her enough attention, she was- she was depressed, she was sad, it's not- And then you decide, so yeah, we're gonna put a hundred other families, a hundred other fathers what you're through, what you're suffering through, just so that they can all hate him? Doesn't it seem a little bit counterproductive? Because if you're brought broken, do you really want another dad to feel that broken? Another mom or another sibling or something like that who loses their child and their friend and their sister? Because your daughter, like, I understand. I completely understand pain, the heartbreak, the complete upset and the feeling like you're never gonna heal. Like, that I can't, that I can understand. But to make a hundred other families feel that way just to get a little bit of vengeance on one man who didn't really know what he was doing. You can only control things like that to an extent, so there wasn't all that much more he himself have done once it got to the point that he realized it. And he wasn't exactly right in lying to her and not paying her any attention. I'm not saying that at all, but I can't fathom why the dad, like, it, he, almost, he almost seems worse than and then Khalid tried to like fight against it, but he couldn't because then they took they did the took away the rain and all those people were starving and nobody even understands that that's what the reasons for. Can they not tell them? But he can't tell anybody. So it's just it's a mess, and you really really feel for Khalid because I didn't you didn't realize that's just how horrible it is and how close to breaking he is because he can't he can't kill Shahrazad even if he needs to, and even then she's like, well. If that's the case, then I'll die. And he's like, no, that's that's not happening. That's not even an option. We'll figure it out somehow, but that's not gonna happen. So, but you can, he's, he's strong in his own way, but he's also a boy who's breaking. And it's really, really hard to see that, but it's also really interesting to get to see how deeply things are affecting him and her, and his relationship with her and with everybody else and his relationship with the people and how quickly they change when they realize that this one girl has changed his mind. On the other side of things, you have Tariq who's doing re re uprising, rebellion kind of thing, trying to get, stake his claim to the throne against um, Khalid so that he can save Shahrazad. You have Reza, who he was sketched from the beginning. I knew he was up to something. And then he comes in, you find out the beginning, and that he's the one who hired the mercenaries to go after Shahrazad and Khalid. Shahrazad, as well. Why? Because of Shiva, like, it's just... There are- I have so many questions for the next book and I don't have the money to buy it. <laughs> anyway, and then you have the whole thing with Jahandar and what is he doing? That's when the whole fantasy thing comes in, right? Because you have the whole- the curse, the spell, the whatever, but also Jahandar is learning his magic. Oh, and the magic carpet! That was so exciting and I loved it, I love him. But when you have the whole thing with- and you get to see progressively his power growing and then he has to- killing things in order to get his power, I honestly thought he was gonna kill Tariq. Because at the end of it, he asks like, okay, what would you give to save my daughter? And he says, anything, anything, and Jahandar has been talking all- Oh, I need more power. Oh, I don't want to kill the horse, but power's always hungry and I need to feed it something more substantial. And I'm like, Tariq is pretty damn substantial. Kind of part of me was hoping he would. I really hate Tariq, guys. I'm really sorry if you like him, but I can't stand him. But then at the same time, Shazi wouldn't want anything to do with her father then after that if he turned into a murderer and killed, like, she, she wouldn't be happy with any of the things he's doing and it's like everybody is trying to protect Shazi and try to rescue Shazi by doing everything that Shazi would not condone. Where is the logic? And then the ending absolutely broke my heart and Jalal goes after Despina and then Tariq shows up and they take Shazi away and they can't find Khalid and then Jalal's like, okay, if you really love her, then you won't ever bring her back here and we're all just like, no, more Khalid, Khalid, what are you gonna do now? What about him? And then at the end of it, and he tears the letter that he wrote her, which was just so heartbreakingly beautiful and sweet and full of love. And he tears it and throws it into the fire. But just like, do you not think you're gonna see her again? Is that how you think this is gonna go? Well, obviously you're gonna have to see her, but it's just, you can feel their heartbreak. 
Oh, <gasps> this was intense. This was intense, guys. So anyway, those are my thoughts on The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adie. Still hoping I'm not totally butchering that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you also enjoyed the book because I loved it oh so much. Uh, if you did, if you didn't, just tell me, let me know in the comments. I would love to talk to you guys about it. I'm probably never going to get tired of talking about it. So just, you know, say what you will. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, I've been Brittany and I will see you guys next time. Bye!